Hey everybody, this is Ms. Dietrich and I'm going to help you understand how to use distributed property using this rectangle here. Before we begin, I'm going to scroll down, you're going to pause it and read the definition I'm about to show you and then when you're done reading it, then you'll hit the play button. Alright, here we go. Pause, I'm going to move down so you can look at the definition. Read it. Alright, we're assuming you've read the definition and now let's take a look at how we use this. Now, we're looking at this rectangle and we know it's 12 in length and 5 in width. And if we were to figure out how many square units we're dealing with here, it's 60 because 12 times 5 is 60. We're going to look at a different way to distribute that. We can break it up into two small rectangles. And if we break it up into two small rectangles, the one thing that we didn't change is we did not change the width. The width remained as 5 for both rectangles. Now, if we talk about the dimension of this piece, let's just move this over just a teeny bit just to make it feel a bit better. If we talk about how wide this piece is here, that piece there is 2. Let's put it down here. And if we talk about the length of this piece right here, that would be 10. Now something to notice. This plus this equals the length of the piece. So one way to distribute this, 5 was the dimension that didn't change. And we broke up the length of this into two things that add up to be 12, which in this case were 2 and 10. So in other words, we did 5 times 2, 5 times 2, and we get 10. And we did 10 times 5, or 5 times 10, and we get 50. 5 times 2 is 10. Five, this would be 50. And if we add these two things together, doesn't that give you 60 square units? So we've just redistributed. There's, there's still the same number of square units in the entire rectangle. Now another way you may see this written, it's the same thing. It's 5 times 2, represented here, plus 5 times 10. And even if we were to follow order of operations and add this up, that's going to give us the length of the original side, which we recall was 12. Isn't 5 times 12 60? All right, so let's take a look at a different shape now. I have one down here, kind of handy. Let me click and drag it over. Okay, how about like that? All right, so I'm just going to erase a couple things here that applied to the last example. And now we're going to use the new example. And we can break this up in a different way. How about we break it up going this way, down this way. All right, so do you see we're breaking up the 8 now? This is going to be 3 units going this way. I see 1, 2, 3. And now let's use green going this way. Oops, a little bit off there, but you get the idea. Now if you think about the length of this piece here, wouldn't that be 5? Now these two numbers here, the red and the green number, add up to be 8. So in other words, um, the thing that we're keeping in this case is this length, which is 12. That's 12, I think. Let me just check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so 12 is the keeper number. That's the dimension that didn't change. We broke up the 8 into a 5 and a 3. By the way, we all know that the uh, original rectangle, we would do the 12 times 8 and get 96. So we know that this has to equal 96. And if we were to do this plus this, we get 8. 12 times 8 is 96. Now another way to think of this is 12 times 5. 12 times 5. That's right here. That's this green piece, which would be 60. And then 12 times 3, which would be 36. 60 plus 36 equals 96. Distributed property in action. <laughs>